For more on Hong Kong's retail scene, earlier we spoke with Michael Zakur, Vice President for the China Asia Specific Practice at Tompkins International. We asked him why Hong Kong is such a hot shopping spot right now. I think it's a really big tourist time. We're seeing people from all over Asia, all around the world, and all over the mainland flocking to Hong Kong um, so far in the spring and summer. And we've seen a real rebound in the retail sector in Hong Kong. Um, in fact, uh, according to the South China Morning Post, this is the third consecutive month in a row that we've seen retail rise after a period of contraction. Um, and so I think there's a lot of excitement about the anniversary. I think there's a lot of excitement about the place that Hong Kong still and will continue and grow and hold in the world uh, and its importance to China and, and the rest of the world as both a tourist destination, um, as a financial hub, and uh, just a great place to shop. So we saw a 1.4% uh, improvement uh, this past May in jewelry. Uh, and this is compared to the same period last year with a 17% drop. Do you think you can tie this into the anniversary festivities? No, I think that's actually part of a bigger trend, um, which is we can say uh, with full confidence that luxury is back in China. We did have a bit of a downturn in the luxury sectors. Um, but this goes beyond even just the last two quarters, but starting around fourth quarter of last year. Um, we've seen a massive rebound in jewelry, in timepieces, auto. And so um, I think there is a whole new generation, millennials, um, who have come back to luxury and who are interested in luxury from around the world. We're certainly seeing it in the luxury alcoholic beverage industry. And so this is part of a bigger trend in, in Hong Kong, uh, that luxury is back. It's in vogue again. So prescription drugs, herbs up 10.4% compared to the same time last year, uh, along with motor vehicles. Uh, we don't want to pinpoint every single thing, but what's to exp how do you explain uh, the drop and in, in some goods and not in others? Sure. So, um, yeah, to your point, um, we're seeing uh, Watson's announced that they're now opening four stores per day with a goal of opening 1,400 new stores. And so Watson's is actually a hub for vitamins, for supplements, for personal care. And again, I think what we're seeing is um, luxuries made a comeback, but there's a real focus now in Hong Kong and um, the surrounding areas in the mainland to, you know, take care of yourself, to be good at yourself. So anything that you put on your body, anything that you put in your body is part of a larger growth trend in Hong Kong and China. And so I think we're seeing an uptick both in online sales and bricks and mortar retail sales in Hong Kong for those categories. And also I think, you know, with automotives, it, it's cyclical. Um, we had, again, a little bit of a downturn, but we have a lot of new drivers coming into the market. We have people looking for second vehicles. Um, and the access to the mainland in Hong Kong and beyond, uh, the roads are better than ever. And I think a lot of people want to have the freedom of an automobile. Hong Kong, obviously, a, a high-end area, very expensive to live there. Um, and you make a good point about luxury goods making a comeback. But uh, why there? There are other uh, opportunities, Shanghai, for instance. Why do people go to Hong Kong for these goods and services? Well, I mean, certainly, I think people flock from all over the world to Hong Kong to shop and uh, partake in what is one of the most dynamic retail environments the world over. Um, you know, you can shop Hong Kong and, for my money, put it right up there with New York and Paris, um, Rome, the other great shopping destinations. But, you know, Obviously, over the last especially five to seven years, mainland Chinese consumers have driven um, a massive expansion um, in shopping, consumer, and retail activity in China. Again, we saw a bit of a retreat in that over the last year and a half, um, but the mainland tourists are certainly back. Um, the mainland day trippers are certainly back, and they're spending again. And so I think that's really what's driving it. And, and really what I think about is when we look at, you know, where Hong Kong is today and where it's going in the future, you know, I think its role is certainly changing a little bit in terms of it being an attraction for mainland Chinese, for tourists, for business people. It is still going to be one of the most important business and financial hubs um, in all of Asia. It's still a bridge between East and West. It's still a bridge between the mainland um, and the island itself. And so, you know, overall, what I see is Hong Kong's role maybe developing in a way where um, 
the way that New York and San Francisco and Washington, D.C. complement each other. I think Hong Kong's role is going to evolve in that same sort of relationship with Shanghai and Beijing. And let's face it, um, for business people, for tourists, for shoppers, you know, those three um, cities in that area are, are key visits for business and, and fun.